director Martin Scorsese nos invita a un apasionante viaje hacia un mundo mágico con su primera película en 3D basada en la exitosa novela La invención de Hugo Cabret. Scorsese se identificó con la historia de un muchacho, su soledad y su relación con los inicios del cine. Nuestro encuentro con Hugo hoy en Escuchando el Cine. What's your name, boy? Hugo. Hugo Cabret. El autor Brian Selznick deseaba escribir una historia acerca de un niño que conoce a uno de los pioneros del cine, Georges Méliès, y lo hace situándolo tras los muros de una estación de trenes de París. <risa> Méliès poseía unas figuras mecánicas llamadas autómatas, que fueron donadas a un museo una vez que falleció el cineasta. Acabaron siendo olvidadas, estropeadas por la lluvia y finalmente tiradas a la basura. He's a wind-up figure, like a music box. This is the most complicated one I've ever seen, by far. You see, this one, this one, can write. Magicians used machines like this when I was a boy. Some walked, some danced, some sang, but the secret was always in the clockwork. Look at that. Can we fix him? Of course we can fix him. Hugo's a, a boy of about uh, 12 years old who um, is living inside the walls of the Gare de Montparnasse, uh, Montparnasse uh, one of the big train stations in Paris, 1931. And uh, what he does uh, there, he lives in this... Uh, Uh, sort of what looks like a garret, in a way, like an attic room uh, filled with uh, uh, parts of clocks and uh, gears and machines and a big window that looks out over Paris uh, and steam coming through everywhere from the, from the train station. And um, the boy is um, apparently alone. No one takes care of him, takes care of himself. And uh, he... Uh, uh, apparently his job is to uh, wind all the clocks in the uh, train station. Um, smaller clocks and big lobby clocks and including a tower clock which is enormous. The automaton is in his room but it's kind of broken down in a way and it, it, it doesn't have any more covering. You could see inside it and all these wonderful gears and, and pulleys and that's uh, not pulleys but gears and uh, flywheels and that sort of thing. Uh, and um, will he get it to work? Will he get it to work and what does it mean? And how The automaton, George Melies, the boy, the clocks, the boy's father who died, um, and this little girl he meets, um, Isabel, who is the goddaughter of George Melies and uh, Madame Jean, uh, uh, Mrs. Melies, and uh, it says goddaughter, and how she helps him find the answer. I uh, was given the book a couple, uh, about four years ago, and it was one of those uh, experiences. I sat down and read the thing completely straight through um, there was an immediate connection to the story seeing the world through a child's point of view particularly the um, particularly the um, vulnerability of a child alone and this is uh, is this boy living in this in the walls of this giant almost like a giant engine of some sort this train station um, and uh, he's on his own yeah. he's trying to make that connection with his father whom he lost he's trying to uh, connect to someone for some reason in life and when I was reading the book I didn't realize that uh, the older gentleman in the uh, toy store was going to turn out to be George Mann yes it's a true story he did wind up in a toy store for 16 years he was broke yeah, and he was found at the Gare de Montparnasse which doesn't exist anymore that train station in, in Paris The station inspector will make sure everything is moving correctly. And if there's a, a, a problem with a robbery or whatever, that station inspector is there, uh, making sure everything runs in a military fashion, really. You two, halt! Uh, particularly at that time. Come here. Good day, monsieur. Where are your parents? I work with my papa, George, at the toy booth. Surely you've seen me there before. And this is my cousin from the country, Hugo. Uh, but 
primarily is to make sure that no kids get hurt and that uh, he has to question any kid, any child who looks like a street urchin. And if they have no family, he's quite they go to an orphanage. Simple-minded, doltish, really. Poor thing. George Méliès había abandonado el negocio familiar de la confección de zapatos, vendiendo la fábrica, invirtiendo el dinero en financiar los comienzos de su nueva profesión, mago. Adquirió un teatro y comenzó a actuar. Por entonces, el cine surgía como una nueva manifestación artística que le ofrecía una gran oportunidad para la magia. Sus primeras películas se recreaban sus actuaciones sobre el escenario, sin embargo pronto empezó a experimentar con técnicas de narración y montaje, investigó e inventó casi todo lo que se continúa haciendo hoy en día. Méliès logró con solo una cámara en su estudio lo que actualmente directores como George Lucas o James Cameron han realizado por medio de la computación y el desarrollo de la tecnología. La posterior evolución del arte cinematográfico hizo que Méliès se quedara atrás y al estallar la Primera Guerra Mundial abandonó su estudio, quemó sus decorados y vestuarios, vendió las copias de sus películas para que las fundieran y las usaran en productos químicos. La película Hugo trata acerca del descubrimiento y la reafirmación de un auténtico artista en los comienzos del cine. Podremos ver toda la carrera de Georges Méliès, de su vida como mago a cineasta y después trabajando en un kiosco de juguetes y golosinas en la estación de Montparnasse. Fix it. I know you've been selling parts in the shop. I told you those you haven't stolen yet. Got a bit of talent. What I discovered working with the 3D was, for me, it um, it enhances the actor. I think because the actor comes, it's you, it's almost like watching a sculpture that moves. Now it's not flat. It, with the right performances and the right moves, um, it's almost as if it's uh, a mixture of theater and film, in a way, um, and. I, This is something that's always been exciting to me, and I'd always dreamed of doing it, uh, film and three. I never thought I would. To see this picture, I think one has to feel that it's, it's certainly you can be with your whole family to see this film, um, uh, despite the fact that my name is on it. You can do that. And um, uh, but what I found interesting was the connection to the boy and the mystery of the story as he unravels this mystery and as Isabel unravels her mystery 
and how it all comes how it all comes together uh, and brings people brings for, makes their lives fulfilled. And I think also it would be interesting for an audience to see this world that we created of Yugo Cabaret, of the train station, of um, uh, the Melier studio. All of these things together create uh, a little microcosm of a child's world um, that I think hopefully is very moving. Of course, it's a lead story that the filmmaker of, of Marty's stature and pedigree is working in 3D. Your film is about the magic of cinema, and the movie is magical to watch. Do you want to have an adventure? When the image comes up and it's in 3D, and you have that extra element, it is special. Every shot was special, and everyone we pushed as far as we could to fit into the nature of what we were trying to do with, within the story. If you've ever wondered where your dreams come from, this is where they're made. The beauty of what you did was you integrated it with the color, with the composition, with the with the camera movement, with the acting, everything. It, it, it's just, I would say it's like a like a 16-cylinder Bugatti firing perfectly on every cylinder. And 3D is one of those cylinders. Where do you live? Is it a secret? Yes. Oh, good. I love secrets. I found that the setting of the story lent itself to the element of space and depth like a storytelling, in other words, to use it as narrative because of the, the train station itself, the interior, the clocks, the automaton itself. Stop that child! Apprehend! It's absolutely the best 3D photography that, that I've seen. I think it's very, very different what you're doing because you've actually embraced it as part of your artistic medium. You know, I think of it as additional colors to paint with that you never yes. had before. We could get into trouble. That's how you know it's an adventure. Every subject matter can encompass this medium. Really, any subject can. Uh, Shakespeare in 3D. Imagine Citizen Kane in 3D. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not saying do it. only happen in the movies. The story's not over yet. I felt that the audience was right there with every nuance of what was happening, but I think that the 3D actually enhances that because they, they feel so much more involved. It's such an exciting uh, chance now for the medium to really expand this way. Search so hard to find a secret message from his father. This is all I have left of him. And my message lit his way. Hugo! Right after my father died, I'd come up here a lot. I'd imagine the whole world was one big machine. Machines never come with any extra parts, you know. They always come with the exact amount they need. So I figured if the entire world was one big machine, I couldn't be an extra part. I had to be here for some reason. And that means you have to be here for some reason too. Todo lo que se ha hecho en cine hasta el presente comenzó con la obra de Georges Méliès. Que sigue conmoviendo e inspirando y aún transmiten la emoción del descubrimiento a más de 100 años después de haber sido hechas. Y que representan además las primeras y más potentes expresiones de este arte. Gracias por acompañarnos. Y siga con nosotros por CNN Chile.